Hello my soccer universe, the winter break is over and Austrian football returns today with a cup round and Lusk will have to play Red Bull Salzburg at home and usually I've doing, been doing so far that whenever we play an opponent at home I made a video about them but that was for the Bundesliga and I didn't want to do it for the cup especially since we are facing Salzburg two more times so I thought how about talking a little bit about the Austrian cup which has a very interesting uh, history to, to, to us, it spawned a European competition. It spawned a European competition, the Austrian Cup. Uh, but overall, it is definitely the secondary competition in Austria. Uh, like in many other, other 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 leagues, it has never had the luster that, for instance, the FA Cup or the DFB Pokal had. Uh, and you see that that maybe the true fans always like the cup because you know you can win a trophy. Uh, but for the general public, the appeal was never quite there. And that is especially visible when you think about the final. Because very often the final, when it was played in the Ernst Happer Stadium, the largest stadium in Austria, which uh, makes sense because in Germany, in England and so on, it's played uh, at, 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 at the biggest stadium there. Uh, unless there is Rapid Vienna against Austria Vienna, you never got the stadium full, not even close to. And the same thing is now that the uh, final is played in Klagenfurt, that unless you have a final like last year, where you have Sturm Graz, who have a very short trip to Klagenfurt, and Rapid Vienna, who always bring a lot of fans, you're not selling out that final. That's unfortunately the reality of uh, the cup. And I think it comes mostly down to that uh, while they try to make it a little bit more um, to the model where there can be upsets in the early rounds. It is very much geared in such a way, uh, or the draw is made in such a way that you have plenty of Bundesliga teams left over and then the games are mostly midweek. Although now we have it on Friday, it's always the uh, first round after the winter break is the quarterfinal in the cup which makes it interesting, more interesting. I also think that the visibility in television, yes, it is on Austrian television, right there uh, and readily available, but I always feel that the production quality could be a little bit better as well. Um, in addition, uh, I think the casual football fan looks maybe now at the quarterfinal, who's saying, ah, my, 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 my team is not in there anymore, I'm not interested in it. It is like that uh, and now in February it's also competing with the skiing season which is a huge deal in Austria too. So um, it's kind of so and so it has been throughout his history. While when I grew up there was always a talk about the magic of the cup uh, and we will talk about the magic of the cup. It never really caught on as much as the Bundesliga did which is overall meanwhile a success story. Um, the Austrian Cup, unfortunately, not as much. I was always wondering, could this be relieved if you make the cup schedule a little bit tighter? Uh, you know, have all the rounds in a very sh tight window, maybe in spring, um, to have the rounds a little bit closer together. But I, d I don't know if that is a solution. I personally would make it that we at least have a more variable final, although I understand why they want to have one uh, one stadium fixed for for the final, but let's face it, Klagenfurt is for most of Austria not that easily re reachable and Vienna is good, but the, the big stadium is not suited for the cup final. It should be a small, smaller one and neither of the big Vienna teams want to give their stadium for uh, the cup final, which was not always that well, The Austrian Cup, as I said, has a little bit of check at his, his history. In the early years, uh, they made this Challenge Cup and the Austrian Football Federation gave it to the lower Austrian Football FIFA Federation. And as you may imagine, it was all Vienna dominated, although already in 1935, Teams from the so-called Bundesländer, meaning teams outside from Vienna or near, near, near Österreich for that matter, could actually enter. Um, 
So uh, it's there. I think Sturm Graz even made it to a quarterfinal back then. But it was very, very, very much Vienna dominated. Dom uh, during the Nazi regime, of course, there was no all, all Austrian Cup. After. after the war, the cup then got reintroduced. But the problem was that uh, it was, of course, the Vienna teams were always much uh, bigger and better. So that the teams from the pro provinces wanted to have a little bit more of a say. So what they did then for two seasons is that every province in Austria made their own cup competition. The winners then went into the big cup competition where then Austria Vienna was wiping the floor with them. So very quickly after two iterations, the cup got canceled and it didn't come back until 58, 59. And then it was also first um, uh, Vienna dominated. However, in order to make the cup a little bit more attractive, uh, the uh, president of Wacker Wien, a team that does not exist in this uh, guys anymore, actually thought we should get a European spot to make the cup more attractive. We should invent a European competition for all the cup winners. They uh, announced this to UEFA. UEFA was not very happy with that. Uh, and so the Austrian Football Federation <laughs> took it upon themselves. We're making the cup of the cup winners. That after its first iteration, they invited all the cup winners around Europe. Fiorentina won that one, and UEFA from next uh, time time on actually uh, took over this competition and even made the first competition official. So I was not aware, but that is actually quite an interesting story because that the cup was reintroduced, and on top we got the Cup Winners Cup tournament out of that. And the Cup Winners' Cup was uh, for Austrian teams overall a relatively successful co uh, competition because the only comp competition where they could reach the final, except for Salzburg in the UEFA Cup '94, three times, although all the finals got lost. And this is a whole different history about the uh, Aust uh, about the Cup Winners' Cup. Um, be it being reintroduced into in the '60s, then uh, while it was still very Vienna dominant, this was right at the time when the domination of Vienna teams in the Bundesliga was about to get broken, and it happened so in the Cup as well, where Lask, and that's why I'm wearing it. Won uh, like the championship in '65, they win the double, and they're the first team outside of Vienna to win any trophy. Uh, and interestingly enough, they would they played in the final against Wiener Neustadt, uh, which is not Wien. This is uh, Lower Austria, Niederösterreich. So uh, it was meant to be broken. Even more interesting is that no one in Linz cared about this at the time, because it was all about the championship where. Uh, they knew they were up there, but no one even thought that they could win the championship. So a uh, very, very interesting dynamic there and tells you also about the um, early and continuous struggles of the cup competition. Uh, Lask also was part of another uh, reaching in the 60s, actually four cup, cup finals, winning the one in 65. Uh, one really uh, hard one was the cup loss to Austria Vienna in 1967. This was a cup final that was played in uh, two matches. Uh, they win the first one 2 1, they lose in Vienna 1 0, and then it had to be at the drawing of Lotz. And there's a story that the coin was uh, tossed, and um, you had to do it while the coin is in the air. However, the last player did it too early. Thought they had won it and then it had had, had, had to be rethrown and Austria Vienna won the cup. So uh, also typical Lask story. In the 70s then, in also reflective of the Bundesliga was the time where Wacker Innsbruck, who actually won the first cup against Lask in 1970, they were then kind of alternating with Rapid Vienna, Austria Vienna and uh, Wacker Innsbruck were the winners in the, in, in the cup. The other uh, Linz team, first Linz, then also made it into the cup final in 78, but these were, were, were very good times. The 80s, I honestly, when I look at the um, finals, they were some of the best finals that the competition have ever seen in there. But when I looked at the spectators, uh, not so great. One interesting part is that the final for most of the time was played in a two-legged format. And I think it was also true for the semi-finals. Um, using the away goals rule and so you for instance saw in a Devon Graz winning against Salzburg in over, over, over time on the second leg uh, and, 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 and it went so on. However there are two finals that were only one leg and this is probably two of the best finals that the Austrian league 
or the Austrian football has ever seen. This is the 85 and the 86 finals, which were part of a series of three Vienna derbies, Rapid Vienna against Austria Vienna, in a row, uh, which of course sounds now great. And I, when I hear this, I imagine a full Ernst Happel Stadium, or back then Prater Stadium, but this was played in what was uh, the Weststadion Gerhard Hahn Hannebestadion, which was actually Rapid's home ground. Uh, I'm talking the 85 final that ended 3-3 and Rapid Vienna won on a penalty shootout 6-5, 3-3. It was, the goals came late. It was 1-1 after re re regulation. Then it was only uh, four goals in overtime. And then it was topped by the 86 final uh, where Austria Vienna won 6-4 in overtime. It was 3-3 after regulation with Rapid three times taking the lead. Austria Vienna always equalizing. They take the lead. Uh, in over, over time, we repeat and then they run away 6-4 winners, still the greatest final ever. We also had our first sensation with uh, Krems from the second division winning the cup, but more on that later. Uh, in the 90s, it was then first Austria Vienna World dominant team and Austria Vienna keeps com com coming up with the cup. They are the record cup winners, uh, winning early on. Quacko had a few, then another team from Lower Austria after Krems, Stockerau, also was a winner in there. Uh, and then comes the time of Sturm Graz, uh, who makes successive finals, I think from 96 to 99, they're always in, 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 in the final and winning it except on one occasion uh, when the game was not played in the Praterstadion against Ried, uh, which was also a little bit of an up, up, upset. Then the other team from Graz, uh, GRK, also uh, won, won it a, a few times. There's a famous uh, Graz Derby final between uh, GRK and Sturmgras. The GRK won 3-2. That final was played in Graz for obvious reasons. And this was the great time of GRK that also then, uh, I think, win the double and go bust quickly thereafter. Meanwhile, by the mid-2000s, Austria Vienna were kind of again a dominant team and again they win a cup final uh, against Rapid Vienna and then a few in, in a row. In 2008 the cup was cancelled because all the Austrian national team should prepare for the Euros and so it was only held with amateur teams so this doesn't really count. When it came back in 2009, of course, Austria Vienna won it. The 2010s all Red Bull Salzburg, although they have been losing two finals uh, um, against... No, they, they lost one final against Sturm Graz and then once they didn't make it to the final, but other than that it was all Salzburg, Salzburg, Salzburg. They win their first cup in 12, but in 2013 probably the biggest surprise ever with Pushing, suburb from Linz, close to my working place, winning the cup and denying Austria Vienna the trophies, uh, the double in a way. So, I want to also talk about the biggest surprise winners of the cup because that's usually that's usually the most interesting part. Curiously, before we talk surprise winner, one big big surprise that Rapid Vienna have not won a cup since 1995. They're not a cup team. I have to say that on number five, I have to put Lask in there because it is a sensation at the time that a team not being from Vienna can win the trophy. So I. Uh, this has to go ahead of Reed in the winning in 98, although this was another big, big surprise, but just the pure fact that he broke the monopoly. In 2001, FC Kärnten, uh, and that's a whole other story, who were uh, second league about to be, uh, were second league champions, went to the cup final and uh, also won the cup against um, Tirol in overtime. And this was the Tirol team that were actually winning the championship over and over again. So quite a surprise there. The next one is in 92, Stockerau beating Rapid in the final, coming back with a crazy period after the a half time, time break, winning it 2-1 and making it to a cup winners cup, but then had to play Spurs, uh, which was also quite uh, the experience for them. So Stockerau, this is a really, really small town, not far away from Vienna. Um, one of the biggest surprises ever. Uh, they were coached by uh, 78 legend Willy Kreutz, of course. Even bigger, I think, is Krems winning the Austrian Cup in 1988 against FC Swarovski Tirol, the most expensive team in Austria at, at, at the time and a little bit also the precursor of what Red Bull Salzburg is doing right now. And this was a two-legged final where Krems win the home game 2-0 
and then win it on away goals. It's a major, major, major upset in the Austrian uh, um, history. Probably the biggest one until 2013, when third tier Pushing make it all the way to, 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 to the final in a competition where they were true giant killers. This is, a, this is a cup final that they absolutely earned by beating all the big teams in Austria uh, ahead. They beat, Vaca, uh, they beat Rapid Vienna in the quarters away from home 1-0. One, one then they went to Salzburg, beating Red Bull Salzburg 2-1 away from home. And in the final, they beat Austria Vienna, the freshly minted Austrian champions in Vienna. And this was, yeah, Austria, Austria had just celebrated the championship where they beat uh, Red Bull Salzburg, the last team not being from Salzburg to win the championship. Uh, championship, championship. They had the, the, the celebration, but it was still a major up upset because they were from the third tier. A third tier team that came as a total and utter surprise right there. So Pushing winning the, 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 the cup has, has, has we considered the biggest um, upset that we ever had. Now let's talk also a little bit about my memories of the cup as a lo as, as a Lusk fan. And actually, I I have two. I mean, there are great memories in there, which are mostly uh, related to Rapid Vienna. And there are also some really really ones that hurt against Rapid Vienna. I remember two lost cup finals. One I was present in 1999 against Sturm Graz, where I still think that Lask were overall the better, better team, although they were ranked outside us, uh, having two big chances in overtime to win it and then losing a penalty because of two best players. Missed the first two penalties. And yeah, that really, 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 really sucked. But it came on the heel of, of one of my most favorite Lask wins ever, which I'll talk in a bit. Sturm Graz has been the bane for Lask. I also remember a cup semi-final at home and there have not been many home games for Lusk but a cup semi-final uh, I think in 96 I want to say at home that we lost although hopes were high but we never really had had a chance and then uh, in 90 um, uh, it was in 97 in, nine, in 98 in one of the greatest cup semi-finals losing in Graz I was also there 2-0, but this was a high-class match, as was it last season. Sturm Graz beat us in a really great match. This was uh, the best Austrian match played last, last season, where Sturm Graz won it with a wonder goal, uh, although Lusk had pretty big chances. So Sturm Graz, a little bit the bane of Lusk there. I do, however, also remember quarterfinal away wins at Tirol in the 90s. And, of course, we have to talk about the two wins that really stick out. First one in 2013 when Lask was in the third league. Yeah, third league. You play in the first round rapid at home and you beat them on penalties. That's a great win. Uh, in 17 and 19, rapid unfortunately in the semifinal, uh, one away from home where you just had won the second league. Uh, you equalize in stoppage time only to then uh, concede. Uh, a, a goal a minute later, which was galling at that point, and even more galling was a, another game where I was present in the semi final at home to Rapid, where you were to protect the second best team in all Austria, created many chances. Rapid from one chance makes a goal and wins it on penalties. That hurt as well. But the biggest and my most fondest memory of the Cup is 1999. It was the centenary year for Rapid Vienna. Um, the cup draw was made, it is a Rapid against Sturm final. The Sturm, the best team in Austria at the moment, Rapid celebrating and their only real contenders. Both of them have home games and Lusk is drawn against Rapid. It was a night where there were not too many fans in Hütteldorf uh, and Lusk scored early. I think it's through Jürgen Panis and then Christian Sturm, who was such a hero just a few years early for Rapid, scores the winner and winning that game. Uh, against Rapid away from home uh, is still one of my favorite Lusk memories ever uh, that I can remember. So a uh, really, really cool memory there. However, overall, the cup mixed mem mem memories at, at the moment. I, I would say it's always a semi-final usually that Lusk move, uh, move, move to, but not so much the final and the final as usually you play against the best team in Austria. Which... Gets us now to the current season. So, um, I said already at the beginning, uh, the format, the current format is that you have all the teams from the Bundesliga 
uh, are in there and all the teams from the second league except teams that are amateur teams from the main uh, of, of the Bundesliga clubs. So this is the amateur team of Sturm Graz and Liefering, the cooperation partner of Red Bull Salzburg, are completely independent of Salzburg. It's just they're trading players and they happen to have a Red Bull in their logo. They are, of course, voluntarily not participating in the cup. And then uh, the, each of the provinces have their own cup competition. The winners of those qual 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 qualify and then it is given to uh, the other, the nine federations. Uh, there's a key of how it's uh, give, given out. I mean, the bigger the province is, the more teams you get in the first two rounds, if it's possible. Amateur teams are first run against Bundesliga teams and then the remaining ones play against each, each other and only from the third round on, which is the round of 6-16, uh, it's a free draw where then the amateur team can request to play at home. And from that moment on, it's a free draw. We are now in the quarterfinal stage and you see here the pairings. Uh, we have two big ones, Lask against Salzburg, that's three against one, and Sturm Graz against Austria Vienna. Uh, Leoben Alltag kind of is a little bit an outsider. I do and Rapid Vienna have a relatively cushy draw with playing St. Pölten at home. Might this be their year? We have to have to see. As I can say for myself, playing Sal Salzburg, it was not necessarily a draw that I, I personally wanted. However, our coach won, won, won it because he said, well, if you want to win, win the cup, you need to beat Salzburg sooner or later. And what better than to beat them in our stadium at home where we have a better chance. And I would say so, although as of late, uh, better performances for Lask against Salzburg have come in Salzburg, curiously, and not in Linz, where Salzburg actually show up. Salzburg are, of course, the big favorites in this one, uh, but I'm hyped for this one. I'm really hyped for this one. There's also a world record uh, attempt uh, for simultaneous uh, simulated CPR. So let's see if that world record will fall. We're all excited about that one. Um, I am also excited that Lusk have added a very interesting player, former Red Bull Salzburg player in Wallon uh, and I think the team could play well. Salzburg, though, has to be considered the favorites. But, you know, it's great to have uh, football back to be going to the stadium again, although given the weather outside, yeah, it's not quite stadium weather yet, but it gets a little bit brighter. So, yeah. This is my brief history of the Austrian Cup. The video posts, of course, at the moment that uh, the game in Linz kicks off. So let, let, let me know um, how is the cup competition in your country. I know if you're in Engl from England or Ger Germany, of course, it's a big one. But I would like to know a little bit more. How much did you know about the history of the Austrian Cup, especially the part with the Cup Winners' Cup, which I find really, really interesting. And in any, any case, please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. I'll be back with a review of that cup round uh, soon and with other stuff in my soccer universe. Bye! Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!